We're going. Yep. Green light. Woohoo! All right, let's see. I don't know if this is is this lagging. Let me see. You got too many. You got all those windows open there. All right, the windows. Okay, fine. <laughs> Guys, if you knew how much of a project it was to get this thing going every single week. Oh, yeah. But hey, it's worth it. It's fun to hang out with you guys. Um, happy, um, happy YouTube, Urs. I was gonna say happy YouTube day, but that doesn't really make sense at all. It's December. It so is December. Nate and I are talking about what's gonna happen in 2018. We are. And we had, since we last talked to you guys, I guess the last time we had a show here was with everybody here in, in the, when we had the whole team out um, to San Francisco. And then we ran the 50K race. Oh man, what did we ever. And then we went 53. Kilometer race. Oh god, those three extra a, kilometers oh. over the bridge. Yeah, not good. Thank you, North not Face good. organization. And uh, and then we were in Austin for what was called the running event. I don't know if you followed us uh, last week when we were running around and talking to all the companies. But um, yeah, let us know if everything is sounding good, guys. Hey, hey, Nani, what's Nani, going on? What's up, Duncan? Running Geek Girl is back. Yeah, Running Geek Girl. We don't actually know your real name. I mean, you don't have to give it. But, I know. We you know, kind of like so we know. like the alter ego. We can give you um, a name if you'd like. <laughs> Duncan, hey from New Zealand. What's a name uh, that starts with uh, with G? Running Geek Girl Galen. I guess that's a name. Is that's like a, that's like a male name. No. Like females, you know Galen. I know Or one. does Galen go both directions? I used to have a... I do have a friend named Galen. She's a wonderful singer. I'm gonna refrain from saying anything else because yeah. when we go in this direction, I always get in trouble. So we have this thing now with Nate where it is reliable that he just sticks... I would say his foot, but it's much larger than that in his mouth. All the time when we're on live camera. I know, it's been bad. It's pretty bad. I think I've gotten too comfortable. He's gotten so comfortable with you guys that he forgets that uh, the other people that we talk to may not want to. <laughs> not everyone wants cameras stuck in their face. And not only that, but like, <laughs> he's like, man, I'm so glad you didn't do that. And then you're like, oh, you did do it. Oops. Oh, yeah. It's I'm happened right a few times. We were talking about it again because it was just embarrassing, but I know. Yeah. Um, New hey, goals for 2018. It's Heather. Hey, hey Heather. Heather. Okay, we will try to remember that. Heather, how's it going? Um, are you running Geek Girl all over YouTube or just just for us? I don't know. Must be all over YouTube. Do you, do you have a running Geek Girl channel? That'd be pretty cool. We'll have to check you out. Yeah. Um, if you got some channels, guys, go ahead and check them out. Um, K Love, hey from Calgary, Canada. H Fit Shots, what's up, guys? Uh, from Texas. What do you want to talk about today? We have so much stuff that we got at the running event. We do. Before we go there, yeah. we gotta take care of a little biz. Okay, what's the business? The business is the lunar sandals. Oh, lunar right, sandals. right. Okay, so uh, let me go get my lunar sandals first, and then I'll show them to you, and then we'll show you some things that I we I think you, in. like, your story and background of the lunar sandals oh, bears repeating, so we'll, we'll talk about that yeah, a little bit. Um, but Craig's a very cool story in terms of knowing the guy who created these lunar sandals, um, exploring a lot of the barefoot running uh, aspects of things, and they, are doing a giveaway with us today. So if you hit the Glean link in the description, um, you'll be able to enter to win. I think we're giving away more than one pair. It might be two. Uh, so if you want to check out some very cool sandals, hit that Glean link. You know how to enter. You guys know the drill at this point, and I'll be able to enter in. And then Craig's going to come back and tell us a little story about how he met the guys from Luna. Yeah, so uh, back in... Let's see, this would be 2006, I guess yeah. it was 2006. Uh, I was living in Seattle, and the uh, the barefoot, what do you call it, the Vivo, the Vibram. Yeah, the Vibram. little finger toe shoes. Vibram, Vibram, Salomon. Oh god, okay. So this company, the one that makes those soles, they had come out with these toe shoes, except for at that point, they only had one type, and it was actually meant for sailors and people like who were on the decks of like boats and stuff like that. But Boots. I was uh, into this idea of running um, with very little on my feet, and I had already gone through a period where I was, you know, I tried cooking my shoes and then taking and peeling apart all the layers. So why did you cook your shoes and take them apart? Because when you put your shoes in the dryer, they fall apart. You know that, right? So you don't put your shoes in the dryer. I don't anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever put your running shoes in the dryer. You put it in the wash, but not in the dryer. The heat uh, that they use, the glue that they use for shoes, is is heat. Uh, 
prone. I don't know. What happens <laughs> if you're running so fast and you're creating so much friction? It's that funny the shoes that you mention apart. this, but in some of the really hot races in the, uh, mm. the Badwater Ultra Marathon, oh right, they have to run and replace their shoes because if they run on the on the cement. Uh, it's so hot, the tar, it's so hot that the shoes kind of start to melt. I think that's a Dean Carnassa story. It is. Where he runs book. on like the white yeah. paint uh, on that thing because 100%. of... Uh, that's and crazy. Just, okay, and it's crazy. So, back that's to the story. Like beekeeper. Um, yeah, I don't know where those white seats are. I'm just going to keep pulling you off top. Yeah, I'm really trying time. to keep... <laughs> Anyhow, I just cook my shoes, peel them apart, try to make my own barefoot shoes. It was really bad. It didn't work very well. And then finally, I was running... I sometimes just run barefoot, which doesn't work so well, especially on the pavement. Wait, was, can you explain yeah. what else, what the rest of your outfit was when you were running barefoot? I, I feel would like that's sometimes... I was in this idea of like, man, I can get rid of my shoes. I got rid of my socks. I don't really need a t-shirt. I really just need like a like a pair of shorts or a loincloth. <laughs> and so I would go with these little itty bitty track shorts from college and I'd literally just leave my house and go running and I thought that was really cool because along my route, which was Lake Washington, I could like jump in off of what, the docks were all open, you could just go jump off the dock and then I'd swim to the next dock, climb out and then keep running and sometimes I'd do that a couple times. And it was just, it's like a, it's beautiful. Seattle Sometimes he would come out with the fish in his teeth, <laughs> start a little fire, it's, I, eat the fish. I used to love running. this about Seattle. Seattle, I go running, and then in the summer, that you I would be literally and not wear just clothes. like jump into the lake and then swim from one, like in, in Green Lake in Seattle, I would swim from one side of the lake to, no, to the other, and then, and then get out and keep running. It was amazing. I loved it. But it was tearing up my feet, and so I got the mm. I got the five finger shoes. And then one day I'm in a park in Seattle, and I see this guy, and he's running with no the shoes. The five finger shoes were the sandals with like all the individual toes. Yeah, I still on. have a pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, do. I don't use them that yeah, much he does. anymore. Um, and so I I met this guy who's running with his dog, and his name's Ted. And it turns out that. Um, he, well, we got to be friends and he was making sandals in his garage and they later became the Luna Sandal. But Ted also, you might know of him as Barefoot Ted. He was profiled in the Born to Run book with Chris. And I had just, you know, uh, I just yeah. was about to leave Seattle at the time when the book was coming out. And so they were thinking about putting on running seminars and I was gonna help them and so I was, supposed to go down to Palo Alto and like it was something or something Stanford campus or something like that. And yeah. then I had my tech job and I was like, I can't do a tech job and do running, whatever. So I was like, Ted, I can't. Tech and running. Can't do it. Yeah. Tech and running. Who knew? But it's funny to think that this is 2009, 2008, 2009. And I was thinking about like running and training and stuff like that as a yeah. job back then, which I totally forgot. I mean, like I was mostly in the tech industry at that point. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so that's how I know Ted McDonald. And uh, so a uh, barefoot Ted, but barefoot Ted, I, I contacted him a couple months ago and I was like, hey, you know, you should check out what we're doing. We're like, you know, have a lot of traction and a lot of runners that, uh, you know, we could be you guys. Yeah. And we'd love to do something with Luna Sandals. And so he sent me a bunch of these pairs. And um, because I was training for the Ultra, the 50K, mm. that, these are not as worn as they would be. But um, these are great sandals. They're like, they've, they've modernized the, the, the strap. I mean, when we were making them, when he was making them, it was literally like a piece of leather and then he would go to, um, he would order these large pieces of rubber. They were just pieces of rubber. And then he like put a string around my foot. We cut it out there and then he just poked holes in it. And that was the shoe. Oh, wow. And I had those shoes up until this past year when they finally broke. Yeah. And it was, yeah. So, uh, I'm really happy to have a modern pair now. It's pretty cool. Um, I I am a huge fan of, um, you know, you, I, I think these are tools. I don't you run all my mileage in them, but there are people that run a lot of mileage. I think it's similar to anything that you're going to do barefoot. Like it's barefoot is some great advantages, but you know, there's a lot of cautionary tales as well because you can't jump into it as right. quickly as people think. So you can't just jump off and, and after wearing shoes for 35 you years. Can't you can't just know. jump off the dock and catch the fish in your teeth and swim to the other side and do the campfire. You can. You can do all those things. <laughs> you can do all those things and more. It's a lot of experience. It I mean, is. It is yeah. a lot. It is so, a lot. so anyway, long story short, yeah. um, 
We have These things are great for swimming, and they're okay for running. And if you want a pair, I, go ahead and hit the Gleam link down below. I'm kidding, they're actually awesome. And hit the Gleam link down below. You can enter. We're going to be doing a live drawing at the end of the hour. If you want a like a truly, not, not a barefoot shoe experience, but if you want a barefoot experience, this is the closest thing to it because your foot is, it's basically, it feels like you're running on material that is like this because it's almost like, it, like wherever your foot goes is just like a piece of of it's just pure protection rubber. yeah it, and, and, it, and it kind of like it's almost like there's somebody's laid out a track in front of you made out of this rubber material and you're running on that yeah. um, you know it's a good reminder like we kind of we're going to be talking about trends for next year we are seeing more companies do more like cushion shoes and sometimes the cushioning isn't actually soft Mm -hmm. Right, it's it's like it's sturdy and it's really you know some of the things that guys are running warehouse are talking about foot protection. Yep, an idea that when the you're running the upper, the rise of, well this is the rise of the upper, but this is like the 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 sole. Yeah, you know working on shoes that have like like the running sole. <laughs> All right now you're pulling me off topic. Play this game. <laughs> <laughs> and you know so I found myself running in a pair of Ultra Temps, which were more of a maximal shoe for. The, the North Face 53K, mm -hmm. and I found that that was kind of nice to have, like my feet weren't as beat up after these super long runs, but it's also a good reminder that, you know, this much cushion doesn't really do all the work in terms of shock absorption. How are those Tim's doing? Pretty good? You like doing okay, yeah. I, got another, I got a new yeah, pair. Thank you guys. Okay. Kyle Thanks, from Ultra, who was on our show yesterday, Kyle, if you're listening, uh, I would like a pair as well. So I think you have my address. I will wait by the door. And wait well, this was this was Stephen. This was Stephen Calais. So he was the man who Kyle that that voluntarily one. said. I know Kyle's going to send us some yeah. cool stuff too. Totally. But anyway, um, it's a good reminder that you know wearing other types of shoes is good from uh, that our body does the absorption, especially for setup. Well, it's not just the the cushioning of these things that, that does it all. Yeah, totally true. So uh, can we get onto the stuff? I'm dying. I let's get on. Let's, let's get onto the stuff. I, this, we have. It, I've been so busy. Uh, prepping for all this stuff in 2018 that um, we have not, I have not had time to unpack and so I have this package of all these goodies that I want to dig through and Let's show you guys. It. Okay, so first, can we talk about this? Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, so, Koto Poxy. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this brand, but they're an outdoor, we could say they're an ethical outdoor apparel brand. I like the fact that these are all like second, like first run but excess panels of material. They like just get the material from other Yeah, so companies. like, so like check this out, right? It's like all different things and it's kind of fun and colorful. They make, they make shorts, shirts, jackets, backpacks, and they made some really cool backpacks and computer bags that were all like excess material that they just weren't using anymore. And they were able to kind of patch it together to make this like kind of cool, Patchwork um, quilt, and uh, anyway, they're just super cool. Super cool. They have a little llama. Yeah, they're orange. So uh, we like them. Yeah, we, it's a really cool booth. We enjoyed looking at their stuff. Um, Under Armour was a huge sponsor, though. We went to their Under Armour offices. Uh, turns out, one of my former um, track mates from Rice was working for Under Armour. And just ran into him over there, and, and got some new shoes. We went to an event, and they all gave us a pair of their oh, new hovers. Hovers in there. And what do we think of the shoe? I, well, I haven't worn it again since that day, but I basically it's, it, it did, I just forgot that I was wearing it. So I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, we were all like talking with people. We run on like a three to four mile, like a pretty it's slow run. There's sweaty band in there. I know, right? Three to four miles. Um, and um, yeah, like I kind of the same thing. Like, yeah. it, you know, like a good shoe, not, didn't feel bad. I think neither of us like, you know, knew we were sort of wearing it. Um, you know, here's my thing with like bigger shoe companies and I've been running in the Nike wild horses, which I know it's really popular among the trail athletes. Like I'm so used to and kind of demanding that wider toe box. Yeah. And I feel like the major shoe companies, they're like three years behind. Yeah. And they're, they're slowly getting wider. So like the wild horse for Nike is one of their wider shoes they've come out with. This might be wider than what they've done before, but it's still not where I would totally you know, want it to be. I look at but it as the upper. Are, is, are they, looking, cool. are they a, a fashion company or are they a running company? Because I think running mm -hmm. company, I just don't know why you wouldn't have a wider toe box at this point. Yeah. Like our feet, are they want to splay. I mean, this is, I, I you talk about the barefoot movement and like the stuff that came out of all that, that story of, of and where these sandals go. I think 
you know, we should think less about, about whether you're running on the ground, but like, you know, the proprioception thing is real, but you yeah. don't, you don't have to have like your foot on the ground at, 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 for every mile running 70 miles a week. But the splaying thing is, is real. Yeah, like, it is. you know, I think it's spreading your toes is healthy. You should be as very, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like we're starting to see the, the running, uh, like Look trends change. Like here. We're going to go through more stuff. Let's go, let's go through. Oh, I, got one I left a lot of my stuff at home. I was forgetful at 4 a.m. this morning and did not remember everything. Uh, what else you got? Oh, I got some, I got some deodorant. <laughs> no, we don't need that. I don't need that. I think I smell okay today. I left you. Yeah. Oh my God. You brought the rooster wrap. I want to talk about this. Oh God. I have, he's a naysayer. I'm sorry guys. He's a naysayer. I'm not, I actually got two of them because I thought he would want one later and then he tried to take mine, but yeah. he really does not want it. The rooster wrap. This is a, here you can see it, okay, sorry, the light's reflecting off of it. Um, the rooster app is a way to carry your phone. I'm not gonna put this on right now because it's gonna take a little while, but basically, how can you see this? You wear it like a bra. Yeah. And it wraps around. I thought it was cool if we wanted to take videos while we're running, like video. Yeah, but it's gonna be like the worst Footage you're gonna want to like vomit. That, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Maybe I'm like just wanting to enjoy a view and slowly. It's a good perspective. Slowly pan my gaze. I know. We and did I can just video it while I'm not interrupting. Yeah. We did that, just get a new set of cam. Think about going to see your kid or your nephew at their recital and you want to hold your phone up in front of your face, you can just watch. You just, and you just proudly lift your, your yeah. chest and you just tilt no, no, this they, way. They have, a, like, hmm. they have a little, they have a little rubber piece that you can put in there to help oh. tilt it. So you don't have to tilt as much. Okay. okay. Not maybe our favorite thing, but it was funny. It was cool. Okay. okay. So we got those things. Oh. Um, we have, oh, uh, the freezer. We should have put these in the freezer. Oh, so this was kind of cool. So this company, um, they're called Free Sleeve. It, oh, it actually feels cold. Was it amazing? It actually is house. still kind of cold. Is it really? Yeah. Um, this is a, a compression sleeve that you could put in a freezer that's also cold. So you could put this on like your elbow, or you could put this on your knee or your calf. Underwear. And a nice thing to wear. Um, you know, we, we don't like think of ice as a way of treating injuries, but you know, ice from a recovery standpoint can, yeah. can be useful. Underwear. I've worn mine. Uh, we get free underwear. I don't yeah, know what else we got free underwear. I don't think they were trying these on. Anyhow, they have flaps. I don't understand why they were at a running event to be honest, but uh, they do have like some inner lining. You know, it feels okay because I haven't worn these yet, so I can still show them. They have some inner lining, and uh, it it just kind of keeps keeps everything yeah. in one place. Yeah. So, so running guru asks, can I have a bra, please? Maybe back from this earlier thing. Oh. So there actually was a bra fitting thing, and if you go back to our he's, New York City marathon video, the, he's talking about the uh, the, the oh, rooster wrap. He's talking about the rooster wrap. Oh. Um, well, anyway, Craig in one of our earlier videos did do a. Um, I like this one. Do you like this hat? Yeah, it looks good. Nice slouchy hat. This is a company called Sauce Headwear. Sauce, like uh, like cooking yeah, sauce. Yeah, they're totally fun, based out of Montana. Love them. They had some really cool stuff. They have primarily, I think, women's gear. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it was awesome. I really liked it. Um, are you checking Facebook too? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to check Facebook. When are you guys going to do the giveaways? giveaways. In about 35 minutes. The giveaways minutes. will be in about 35 minutes, right before the end of the hour. Um, guys, click the link below. Uh, to sign to up, you guys hit the gleam link. Hit the gleam link. We'll be giving away a pair of these. We did not even say we talked about these sandals, um, and then we forgot to say we're giving away a pair. Click the link below. You have a way to enter. So there we go. Up. Awesome. Uh, quick shout out to our friends on Facebook, Patsy. Hi from Texas. What's up, Patsy? Todd. Hey. Zen. Look who's wearing the hat this time, Todd. That's right. Uh, Daniel. Hi there from Australia. Dominique sounds great. I think that's with our oh audio God, hat. Uh, Ronald says hello from St. Louis, Missouri. What's up, Ronald? We got ourselves that crew. If you guys are just tuning in, let us know where you're coming in from. Say hello. If you have any questions on different things, as we continue to talk about running trends, we'll also take some running questions as well. Yeah, so the um, there were a lot of companies that were selling 
anti-chafing stuff. This is one company, uh, Sports Shield, um, and, and it's basically like a spray you can spray on. It's kind of like a, a version of Body Glide, but it's a spray. And I tried it. It was it was like really. Did you like it? Like yeah. It, okay. It, I mean, I don't need to spray it on myself right now, but yeah, let's not um, do that. We have the free sleeve. free sleeves, which I guess I gotta put this in my freezer. Oh yeah. We got these little cups. And these cups, it's actually kind of interesting to learn oh, yeah, about was... the Hydropack company. And what's interesting about these guys is that they are kind of the new bladder system of choice for a lot of companies, like including Marsons. Ultimate Direction and Kimmelback. More rooster eggs. Are you been listening to anything no, I'm no. I got so many toys, man. <laughs> it's fun. It's like Christmas. It's I like got a hat on. It's like talking to a five-year-old. Uh, I mean, I'm really glad we're having a good conversation here. You know, I'm having a conversation with uh, my new stuff. With your new stuff. Okay, Hydropack was really cool, though, because I, I, I thought, I did not realize that they were all the same company. So, one of my favorite things about it was, yeah. we don't have one to show you, but there's a way to pretty much, like, open up the entire bladder and, like, reverse it. Mm -hmm. Almost like you're, like, wringing out a sock. Uh, to like totally dry and get all that junk out of there. You can continue now. No, it's good. <laughs> I got more socks. We got socks. So we got a couple pairs from Under Armour. They were nice. Brilliant. Um, oh, we love these guys. You know, I don't run at night as much as uh, some of the guys who, you know, people yeah. live north of us do. Like if you're living in Seattle, this, this would be amazing. You know, um, there's there's different like reflect. There's different things out there. Some of them are lights. And what's neat about this system is that it comes with these strips that you can actually iron on to your clothing so you can customize how much you want and where you want it. And it, you know, apparently stays on for washes for a really long time. So for those of you guys who are, you know, the early and late running warriors out in the dark, you know, having that little extra of reflectivity oh, is yeah. a good idea. Sauce, this is the, uh, the company there. You can see that. Slouchy beanie, that's what this what one is. What else we got in here? Uh, Caterpie laces. Uh, always we our, had a, always our friends. Always our friends. Uh, Mike and Anthony there. Um, these are no tie laces. We talked about these before. I will show you what is on my shoes right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The new things. Yeah. Um, so we're getting some interesting questions here. Joseph says hello from OC. Edward says love the hat. Looks like the birch trees in winter toe. Totally does. Uh, Nani says, send me fast buddy, waiting for a long time. We'll do what we can, Nani. Okay. This is actually, I found when I had an old pair of this, but... Oh, interesting. These are hickeys. Can you see yeah. This? It's very bright here. So, I guess one of the trends we've seen the last year or two are... And, uh, so many no-tie shoelaces. shoelaces. New, like, no-tie shoelaces. And, you know, the only time that I used these in the past were, like, lace locks or something like that for triathlon. And an idea that you could slip your shoes in uh, and out. Yeah. And that really made sense to me in triathlon. So these are, um, these are our, our friends' strike movement. We've talked about their shoes before. We've given away their shoes before. Yeah. Um, our friend Carl works out at Strike, uh, works at Strike, and, and uh, always hooks us up there. So we like these shoes for not uh, all the kind of running, non-running activities, but I still like you wear them to the gym. These are good cross chain I actually wore these shoes for running for quite a while, or actually not that pair. I wore, I wore your pair. Um, I've been, I was running in these this morning as a fan. Carl does not like the fact that I changed my shoelaces out here, but I'm illustrating the fact that these are the hickeys, and it's just another, you know, Caterpie has one version of it where they have these like, you know, uh, modified, kind of like a uh, stretchy, like yeah. caterpillar type of laces. They're pretty cool. Hickeys are another one. I honestly did not realize that this is as much of a problem that people really don't want to touch. It really is. is. Carl, if you're watching, I've replaced my laces. I put them back. I've decided I'm a regular Carl did not like man. that we changed our laces out. I'm still rocking them because they do pretty well for me. Well, yeah. there so. we go. Um, Let's look at a, a few different questions here. Yeah, Adam, let's do it. does Craig know he got a shout out from Mario Fraley on the Negative Splits podcast? Oh, no, I did not know that. So Mario has been a friend of ours for a long time. Yeah, and um, yeah, he was on the trail with me at the 50k, and <laughs> he was gaining on me pretty quick, even though he was doing the 50 miler and yeah. I was doing the 50k. And I crossed him, and I was like, "Ah, oh, Mario, how you doing?" And he was like, "Man." Yeah, working it. Yeah, working, working it. hard. But we were going up a lot of hills at that point, and I think his lower back was giving him problems. He's just like tight. So I called up the next uh, aid station and just kind of helped him massage Magic him out hands. a little bit. Yeah, just 
magical hands. They just stepped um, behind a tree. It really asked no really, questions. I don't. I mean, it was a few minutes. It really, you know, what is it? It was the long five hours of our race. Like, well, whatever. On you. So um, it really helped unlock Mario's back, and then he was yeah. able to keep going, which is yeah. really cool. So it's really cool, and, and I was work. really happy that helped him because I know he trained hard for that, and. Uh, yeah, and I think it made it seem like it made a difference. So I think great. it did. Yeah. Um, we are coaches all the time. We are twenty four seven. I go to dinner to help ask you questions. Running. You go out. I'm sure, do people ask you questions? Yeah. You know, I have a lot of not like friends who run that are not like super runner. Like they're like not in, super athletes. Into running. Yeah, they're, into running. Well, they're like they don't profess that they're runners, but they run, and they're like, oh, you know, my knee. I can't run because of my knee. I'm like. Really, what's wrong with your knee? Let me let, let's go down this path. Yeah. Um, so going on a few more things, Adam. Super cool for showing us. That's awesome. Uh, Rasmus says hi from Denmark. Jasmine. So here come the questions: Is blood doping illegal for races? And do you know if it's effective? If it's I not know something illegal? about this. I do. So uh, blood doping is illegal for any race that you uh, that is a sanctioned race. I think anything that has doping next to it. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a giveaway. How about like water doping? I well, yeah. Water doping, you just get an IV and get yeah. So you can. What about food? Doping? Blood doping. If you don't know what blood doping is, what what people do is they, um, are training really hard and then they'll withdraw blood and then your your body will replace that blood over the course of the a couple weeks and then when you replace that like if you go to get um a Do blood draw a, a blood uh, if you give blood what is it called if you give blood donate yeah. blood. Sorry, I'm blood bank. And uh, your body will replace that blood very quickly in terms of like you, your body will create more blood. But the quality and the amount of uh, red blood cells in that new blood, it takes a while. And so you'll actually feel the difference in your training if you donate blood and then you try to train you know, a week later, it will affect you. But what you do with blood doping is you withdraw the blood and then before the race, you put it back in. And yeah. it's very dangerous. Um, it's very dangerous it, because you're putting a volume of blood that it, it can overwork your heart. And yeah. um, especially if you are, you know, going to race at altitude or you're going to race in, in uh, heat conditions, like yeah. people die from this. And so it's a very dangerous thing. Um, athletes who do it, uh, one, it's illegal, but even when they are doing it, they'll, they'll always have it like, administered by a doctor. And then the doctor yeah, it, it, and it's, we have all yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's a pretty gnarly system. It's it's so definitely, 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 definitely do not recommend doing this at all mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. But just so you know, it is illegal um, for for you to do this. I mean, I, if you wanted to like increase red blood cell count, the natural way to do it would be to you know train or live at elevation. Or if you want a legal option, um, hyperbaric you can, chamber. You're, you're laughing, altitude but you tent. can get it. You can get altitude. Yeah, yeah. And the altitude tents are much better than they used to be. Now you can get ones that basically just cover your neck portion. Oh, really? Yeah. And basically, it goes on your on oh, your bed. Oh, it's like an astronaut. Yeah. And it basically suit. puts your it puts basically like will seal you off from here. It's not like a whole tent. You should attach it to your bed, and then you sleep like that, and you will have headaches, and you will get up in the middle of the night and feel like short of breath for a little bit for a couple yeah. nights, and then you'll acclimate, and the the cool thing about it, if you want to go that far, is that you are developing um, a higher red blood cell count yeah. and well, you're doing it at night, which means you can still train. So the thing about living at elevation is you can't train as hard because you're, you're, you're at elevation. elevation is hard. So the, the, the adage is to uh, sleep high, train low. Right. That's always the Sleep at elevation to train and, and how many places can you actually do that every day? So, so yeah. next question, you like this one. This is from Carrie and we know Carrie. Yeah. She's been around. Um, she says, I want to ask Santa for one of your running programs. Do you have any recommendations? I'm a 30 year veteran runner. Yeah. The half marathon or 10K are my favorite races. Do you have any recommendations on which program? Yeah. So, so Carrie, I just dropped a link to our training plans page, new and improved. If you guys haven't seen a new website, you've got to go check it out. It looks yeah, killer. Someone did a killer job. Someone did a killer job. I don't know who it was. And the, you know, I just wake up and these things are done and I'm like, this is amazing. Um, I would really recommend like our three or six month training club subscription. Yeah. And in that, you know, you've got a few different directions, but for you, you know, we always love athletes starting with the 30 day challenge and then, you know, we have a half marathon program. So yeah. like that would be such a killer combo. And the other thing would be if you were to do six months, it's in the winter, maybe you're not running as much. You don't have any races until the spring. Yeah. Do our eight week running strength program. 
then do the 30 day challenge and then do the half marathon. And um, starting in um, the new year, we're gonna start including, um, we used to have two separate programs. We used to have the weekly running tune up, which is new workouts that are kind of drop in, drop out. You can take them mix match, you know, they're not part of a specific program, but it's what everybody should be doing all the time. Um, the weekly running tune up was three workouts a week and you can you get a strength workout, a mobility workout, and a running workout. And they drop every Sunday. So the weekly running tune up was $10 a month and then the training club um, was $30 a yeah. month. Um, and cheaper if you get the three month pro and six month packages. And then we're gonna start including the weekly running tune up in the training club. So now when you're in the training club, you get everything that we do. You get, you know, if you're not in a training program, because what people were, were saying is that like, look, I did the 30 day challenge, which is like kind of a, a foundational program, gets you ready for a 5K, and yeah. then, but I'm not gonna do a half marathon right now, so what do I do next? And the truth is, you're gonna go running, like you should be doing workouts, and what we think is you should be doing the weekly running tune-up. Keeps you in, you know, the strength, mobility, and all that stuff. Keeps you kind of in good shape. Yeah, so we got a whole yeah. system for you guys. It's great. Yeah. We have someone who'll deliver you coffee every morning. They'll like tie your shoes on. No, that's it's true. 2019, we did that. <laughs> Drones. We're gonna have <laughs> drones fly to you. Everyone's gonna have their personal drone coach. That should be kind of cool. Mm. I feel like I should be a futurist. Are you Actually, I think I'd be a terrible futurist. Is this gonna be new? You, are you giving me your job description now too? That's awesome. That's good. I think I just want a card just be like futurist. That's what I do. I'm, what I do. Uh, I'm just a guy who tells you what's gonna happen. I think they oh call that a, a palm reader. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Futurist. Sweaty palms. Yeah. Sweaty palms. Uh, so, what else we kind of learn and talk about and the, the tier we come Okay, so we, we hung out with Jonathan Beverly a lot. Right. And do you have his book? I do, I can get Where it. Where is his book? It might be up there on the shelf. No, I, I put it in, in our things that we're going to give away. Anyway, Jonathan Beverly is kind of a connection through our friend Mario. And he's a fantastic writer. For those of you guys who've, you know, hit different online running communities and forums. He was the former editor of The Running Times. And he's come out with a different series of books. In one of the books he's come out, we don't have a copy of it, but it's called Run Your Best Stride. And one of the things we love about it is that he, he kind of debunks a lot of um, some of the run technique stuff out there, especially when people start working on their foot strike too much, talking about whole body strength, movement mobility, and so it goes so well with our message, really excited. And this is one of his latest ones, which is yep. Run Strong, Stay Hungry. And I don't think it's food related, but it, I think it, it's advice from It's advice from runners. I mean, it, it's basically going through and he, tra he basically um, interviews people. Oh look, Dina Castor. Yeah. Who we I met Dina Castor. Um, who is a running hero of mine. She's just an amazing runner. And uh, not only did I get to meet her, get a signature on a poster. I know. But she's invited Nate and I to come hang out with her at her ski house in Mammoth Lakes. I know. I'm actually really sick. Yeah, so, we're gonna, so we're gonna, Nina, if you're, if you're a, we a regular this, I don't live know show attending. I don't said in jest, but I we will be there. Well, we had it on video, so we're like, yeah. And she followed up with an email and said, totally come. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, no, so take, no take backs. Yeah, there's no take backs. Um, we're going to get to hang out there. So, let me see here. Um, Who said avocado oh. toast? The future is now, says yeah. Jasmine. Uh, <laughs> avocado toast delivered via drone. Yeah. That would actually be it. really good. I think they already um, have that here in San Francisco. It's, been, it's like old. They've had it for so long. Yeah, right. Um, oh, Edward says, I saw a company called Hypoxico on Ricky Gates' Run Hot Run site that showed all the different equipment included for tents and beds. Yeah, I think that's the Yeah, for the, the bed. for the uh, altitude beds. Jasmine says the future is now. You're correct. You can be a futurist is with Is Jasmine actually Jasmine, like the name? Like your name is Jasmine? I think it's Jasmine. 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 Okay. Uh, Kay Sharman says, I'm doing a Santa Mice Pie 5K awesome. on Saturday in the UK for Children's Hospice and I've not done a 5K in a while. Mm -hmm. Is this a more of a mice related question or a running related question? What is your advice to her if she's doing a 5K? Hey, a lot of you guys are going to end up doing races this winter, uh, meaning like you jump into a, you know, a winter, like a Thanksgiving race maybe you yeah. did, or you jump into a, uh, what do you, you have a joke in your mind, what is that? I see that look in your face. You're like, uh, oh. it's like, <laughs> uh, if you have not done a 5K in a while and you're jumping into a race, what are the things that you should think about in terms of like, hey, I'm about to be a hero and I've been on the couch. Mm. Um, 
I think about like really getting warm, you know, especially mm-hmm. in the winter, you know, when you hit the starting line, you should be sweating. You know, it's, it is really true. Like yeah. with a lot of these cold races, even before the North face race, yeah. um, you know, they had these like little heated, uh, lamps. areas that could hang out heat lamps and people just wore their clothes and they just shivered. Yeah. And then just right before the start, they would go, but you know what happened? Our man over here oh, man. led an entire... Oh, he, actually, it wasn't even a... It was a movement. This was like a <laughs> flash mob warm-up. And I just started to like, kind of absentmindedly like, warm my arms. And then like, one or two of the runners I talked to started to doing that. And all of a sudden, we had yeah, these concentric like circles. 50, 60 people, everybody's kind of... And then they're kind of like, like, oh, it's like a pain thing. Can like, I like, hang out? And then people like, we're like, come on like, in. Come over and like, look at what you're doing. Oh, dude. And it was like, so... Like, oh, I'm going to do one arm. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll just do a leg. <laughs> It was so great. Like I didn't even need to race that day. It was like having so many people jump in and, and do that was so cool. Well, so dark and everyone's yeah. wearing clothes. They didn't even know who anyone was. They're yeah. just like I'm <laughs> jumping in and doing this. Who's this guy? Who's this weird guy? guy? Anyway, super fun. But I love the idea of getting a good warm up, letting yourself jog a, a little bit before you, you go. Um, watch some more videos on leg swings, push ups, everything. If you have a little time for the 5K, like do some runs and maybe do a day where you're doing some intervals, you know, shock the system. And what I might do are like one minute fast, one minute slow, do that somewhere between five and 10 times. And that might be a nice way to like hit hit a workout where you're hitting your race pace or your think your race pace so that the first time you, you are running that fast is not in the race. Yeah. Something that, yeah. Yeah. Quick Um, tips, quick tips, quick tips. So going back to some of our questions and everything, um, let me see here. Um, oh, Edward says, Nate, uh, did Nate bite a lip to go after riding one? Uh, I did not, but it was more nimble than I thought it was. I actually was like, I felt like it was a, like a guilty pleasure. Like, yeah. it's like something like you don't want to see people, you know, it's an interesting, having you do it. It's an interesting thing. Of I mean, I still would go bike without a bike. seat. It's like riding a bike without a seat. That's kind of how it feels. But a bike without a seat, you're usually forward, right? Right. Here, so this has, you, this has you set up so that you're just over yeah. the pedals and the pedals aren't quite as extreme it's like a smaller yeah. little crankshaft and so if you basically had a bike where like you had handlebars that came all the way up to meet you instead of having to like go over yeah that's pretty much what you have um exactly yeah. um oh christy says hey i just signed up for tre last week so excited to get going awesome we're super excited christy if you have any questions you are our priority so yeah, hey if you have any questions about your training what program you're gonna do or this is the time to, to ask them um, Adam asks, what upcoming shoe preview to Thierry are you looking forward to the most? Ooh. I mean, we gotta talk about the Brooks. We do. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that, I, so, in terms of looking forward to trying out? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I think that, um, I don't wanna be like an ultra fanboy, but I'm looking I know. forward but to some uh, of the new Some of the new ultra shoes are really cool. I just, I like, I like that they are, when I think about like things that I, I care about in a shoe, they seem to be moving in those directions. They are. Um, um, we're seeing like lighter shoes. The Solomon shoes are pretty cool. We, we got a like, yeah. short short uh, look at those. If I was looking at the trail shoes, I would definitely try those. Um, Boa, the like lace lock system is is like integrating with um, you know different companies. I think like Asics. And they're trying to make the, so a big thing that we talked to about Jonathan Beverly earlier is like, he's looking at trends for 2018. Yeah. This is the new thing that all comes to is like the, the evolution of the upper. I Everyone is starting to, you do have a gift. Ooh. Oh, is it? Should we give his gift now? We have a funny gift. Let's do his gift. No, it's, it's not his gift. So, okay. So I started at one point just coming in here and just drinking water and putting all my stuff away. <laughs> And then it would go to, well, I'm gonna have water and I'll have an almond. And then that'll go away. And then it's like, I'll have water, I'll have an almond, and I'll have a raisin. And then basically, I've just gotten to the point where it's like, whatever you have in the fridge, Craig, I'm gonna eat it. So every once in a while, Craig is compensated. He, I will say, with delicious though, lunches Nate on Monday. comes in, I'm really bad at doing the dishes. Nate comes in, doesn't even say anything. He just he just does the dishes. And it's super appreciated. Yeah. I, I, oh! Favorite loaf. Favorite loaf. So we've made oh. Craig, and actually, my wife Erin is online. She just reminded me to make sure to give Craig his gift. Feel how dense this it is. is. This thing weighs heavy. Um, Guys, can you see this? This is called Look an adventure bread, and it's it's 
It's no um, oh my god, no flour, no flour, no wheat flour in there. It's, it's like all seeds, three to five pounds yeah. of. of and we're dough. not we're not like anti gluten or anything. We make sourdough bread all the time. Uh, we just wanted to make this because we know Craig uh, really likes it, and it is dude. really fun to taste it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you so much, dude. Really appreciate that. Slash yeah. suck it. <laughs> <laughs> now I get to eat whatever I'm gonna keep you want. Whatever I want. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god. Aaron, I know that you did most of the work there, so really. No. <laughs> uh, no, man, isn't that funny? Uh, she totally did. She totally made that. I just spectated from the side. Thank you so um, much. That was really sweet. Um, um, let me see here. Going down the ring, um, Kay Sharma said that should have said mince pie, lol. That does make sense because if it was mice pie, I don't know if it's like one of those like English sayings where like it's called mice pie. Oh, but it's you not mean really the race? Mice. That makes way way more sense. Way more sense. No, but mice are kind of thing that I think about with Christmas too. I don't know, like the screwing. Yeah, like, that's mice. that's. I don't, I don't know why. Actually, that way. yeah. Mince um, pie. Hmm. Chrissy asked. Oh, this is a good question. Will you start a live thirty day challenge at the beginning of the year? Going to try for my second marathon in May, but want to do the thirty day first. Always nicer with a group. Um, Chrissy, we will be doing a live thirty day challenge. Probably in the February. Yeah. Right? Because we're going to be doing, we, we haven't fully announced this yet, but we are going to be doing another kind of virtual uh, event next year. We're going to leave it at that. We're probably going to be targeting in March and we're going to do a we live. Just let out all of our, we just let out some of our secrets. It's fine. Why not? Really? Yeah, why not? Okay, we're gonna be doing a okay. we're gonna be doing a virtual race again uh, to begin the year, and mm -hmm. we will be start starting uh, race entries. There's gonna be a limited number this time. Yep. Um, because we ordered a limited number of medals. Um, last time when we ordered medals, um, there were there were TRE medals, and so we are continuing to use them because <coughs> if you do the 30 day challenge and you do a 5K, you know that we want to yeah. award that, but. Uh, these medals are specific only for this race, so we've ordered a limited now, but we have a, a sponsor. It's a, it's a Reebok race, which is yeah. pretty cool. Um, we're very happy to be doing a race with Reebok. We think it's like yeah. amazing that these big brands want to work with us now. And um, we made a really cool medal. Yeah, we made a really cool medal. It's going to be like wood with like different types of wood in there. Anyway, we're having fun and we, we've got some help. Yeah. So, so stay tuned for that. And for those of you guys who don't know, what the live 30 day challenge is. All of our programs you can start whenever you want because you guys are all racing at different times. But in our community, we like to do this a couple times a year and we just finished one earlier this week where we all decide to kind of press the play button together and dream yep. together. And it's just super fun and motivating to kind of cheer each other on and, and post and just feel like you're doing this as, as part of a bigger group. And uh, yeah. that's gonna happen in February. And, and you're absolutely right, Christy. Um, if you're doing, is it a half marathon she said? Doing the 30-day challenge is absolutely the right thing to do. One of our new, by the way, um, if you'll notice that our our site, um, um, therunexperience.com, it looks beautiful and is new and has new sections to it, shows all our coaches, etc., yeah. etc. But our um, community site is still our old site, and uh, and so it looks very different. And we are going to be changing that um, very, very, very yeah. soon. The development is almost done. Oh, dude, it's looking yeah. super good. It's looking great, which means that the mobile app is going to change too because that gets pulled in from there. So, yeah. Um, all the like, you know, we've tried to take in a lot of your suggestions and make it easier to use, easier to scroll through, find the workouts. And with that, I'm going to just talk about all the to do lists that you have. Nate is going to oh, create yeah. a, um, a section of the site um, to explain hey, when should you do each program? Like, what type of runner and that sort of So, yeah, you choose each program. So, it'll be a little bit more clear, like, how you can use this throughout the year because. You know, we want you to train for, you know, good training is something that should end. After yeah, we've, been, we've so. been doing a bunch, um, Kirk and Holly and I have been doing a bunch of performance consultations with new athletes, and we did it as a fun thing around Thanksgiving. We yep. said, hey, if you sign up for us, we'll, we'll give you one of these. So we're, we've been doing a bunch of them, which is great, and that's the number one question we get. I'm so excited. You guys have so much stuff. Where do I start? Yep. And so we like to, to get more help, and our website's going to be way better there. Um, yeah. Let me see here. So, let's go back to more more announcements, more questions. I did. I finish the question that somebody had around. Um, I feel like we did. Did we? Okay. If yeah. I, if I didn't, just remind me. Um, so, Daz asked, and guys, if you're just joining us, in ten minutes we're doing a live giveaway. Hit the Gleam link. Enter. Man, get this, a pair of sandals. This live this show is just whipping by. It's been live shows left and by. Um, guys, I have a question. Does anyone know if Oakley do plain clear lenses? I'm looking for a pair of running at night in bad weather to cover my eyes and road. 
but on trail two, they absolutely do. Oakley does prescription lenses too. You can definitely get clear. Yeah, I want to throw a shout out to Gooder. Oh yeah, those now, guys are great. I'm a little upset that I don't have any glasses to actually show you, so I'm gonna actually be like, hey, I'm talking about Gooder glasses, but I don't have any to show you. But Gooder glasses are only 25 bucks, and I let me see if I can find the site. I don't know if they do um, clear. That's clear. what I want to know. Yeah, but they're kind of a fun young company. They're I, making high quality um, polarized glasses. You want to put that this, looks good for this, 25, uh, 30 bucks. Put this in there. Playgooder.com. Yeah, I don't see if they have. I'm just looking up to see if they have any clear ones. But yeah. they're they and guys. Have, and guys, like we have no relationship with them. We yeah, just yeah. talk to oh. them. We just we think they're cool and they're worth. If the glasses out. were were um, like solid, they were like stylish. Uh, I would totally wear these around. And they're like the quality, but they also like hug your head enough. Um, yeah. I, it I often bounce. think that I don't need like performance glasses. I just need a solid pair that like, and, and I thought this fit. I mean, especially considering how many times you see glasses like crunched totally. on the trail, like only 25 bucks, it's great. It really is, you know, yeah. it's, you're gonna beat them around. Super fun colors, uh, really good. Totally. I don't know if they have clear ones. Um, I do know that Oakley. Oakley is clear. They definitely, they, sure. yeah. Yeah, sure. they, they, they have that. a whole prescription yeah. thing, like you could do that. Um, oh, Jasmine asks, Another question, and guys, we're a few more minutes. If you have any questions, throw them in there. If you want to have any more questions on gear, on shoes, um, Jasmine asks another question: Is getting a massage before a race a good idea? If it is, how long before should I get a massage? Also, how long after a race? Ah, let's do it afterwards. So there's different types of massages you can get, right? And uh, massage and massage and for the massages, I'm getting all thinking now about how you pronounce that and. Probably pronounce it my way. I, and uh, Austin Powers. Just saying. Would you like a sensual massage? Yeah. And uh, anyway, like if you're gonna do something right before the race, do something that's just like very light, like longer, smoother strokes, and ideas just to kind of like flush the legs, get a little blood flow, and, and and more like superficial. If you're doing something that is really deep, and where you're trying to actually create some damage and and repair some areas, you know. I would probably not do that, like, like conservatively seven to five days out, no sooner. Yeah. Because it's going to take like a day to recover. Remember, yeah. And especially if you've never done it before, if you're someone who gets a regular deep massage, you know how your body responds to that. But if it's new, I wouldn't do it sooner than a week. And the same thing after the race. If you want to do like one of those little massage booths immediately after the race, it's going to be lighter anyway. They're not going to do anything super deep. And then again, like you know, five to seven days out, you'll be able to get a good deep massage yep. and get that going for you. Um, I, um, can I, can I, um, I need some more people on my own channel. Can I, can I plug myself? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, I actually, okay, so this is cool. So, so one of the reasons why we have gotten where we've gotten is that, you know, this guy has a really good sense on like negotiation but negotiation in a way that is like positive all the way around, like like being able to work with other other partners, really understand what they're trying to accomplish, really communicate what we're trying to accomplish, and and put deals together that make sense. We and can we can't talk about our biggest deal. Yeah. Oh shit! Should we? We could. We agreed. To, I guess we haven't technically signed it. We'll Should wait we? next week. We have to wait till we technically we sign. Really, this thing. really. Cool we got a really big thing coming yeah. up. But anyway, I, I've sort of realized that in my own experience, because I'm sort of afraid of potentially upsetting someone else who I do deal with, I will settle for something mm -hmm. that is not necessarily as good. And it's also not necessarily as good for the other side as well. 100%. Yeah. So anyway, Craig has his own YouTube channel and he's really focusing my a lot channel. on negotiation. So if you guys are like looking for a job and you're trying to figure out how to like negotiate your pay to asking for things when you don't feel like you have a lot of leverage or experience, he kind of shows you how you can do that in a way that feels good. Yeah, and I'm launching. Did I, did I do a good job? Did a great job. Just uh, go slash YouTube slash Craig DeSantis. And oh wait, can I do my there. new trick? What's that? Oh, oh yeah. This one. Totally. Yes. I show him little tech secrets all the time, like how to search from something. Oh, it's so water. good. I'm just, you know, yeah. learning. Just grab there the, uh, I have 96 subscribers, guys. I would love some more. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get Craig up there. Yeah, if you get to 100 subscribers, then I can finally start to modify my my channel page. 
There we go. Anyhow, it, my channel is about, it's shot right here, and I just do one video a week, and it's on how to communicate better, how to use words as like a superpower. I'm trying to figure out what my tagline is gonna be. Yeah. But I, I think that the better we communicate, the better off we are, and so it's gonna be about mediation, because I'm a mediator in my other life, basically, yeah. where I, I'm not, don't get paid. <laughs> and, uh, and I help people on negotiation largely around um, negotiating job offers and then like entrepreneurial stuff yeah. and partnerships and so so um, it's just like a personal passion project of mine and since you guys have been with us on the run experience and like what we do I think this type of stuff applies to everybody so so hopefully you like it and and subscribe and watch some of the videos and I'll be coming up with new stuff yeah yeah thank you um, guys we're gonna do our giveaway in about three minutes for the drawing there's a few quick rapid questions here and we're just want to try to get them in there um, <clears throat> Let's hear. Troy says, recovery sandals, what are the benefits? I've seen about getting a pair. What brand would you recommend? Um, you know, we saw Hoka come out with a new pair of recovery sandals. Yeah. You know, I, I just think it's an idea of, it, it gets you out of your gross running shoes. Like, let's say you've just been running and they're like, you're just wearing something else that is like a fresh, clean pair, something that feels good on your feet. I'll get, I'm gonna give my personal take on this. Just on, okay. Recovery sandals are a thing that like you didn't know that you needed and I don't think that you should be convinced that you need them now Because I don't think that that is necessary But great. if you are already like hey, I buy sandals anyhow And I like to wear them after races then these ones are kind of cool and like Hoka has a really cool thing where they are wearing using the same midsole and, and outsole and then just putting yeah. a sandal around it, which is a cool concept and there are a couple other companies that are doing similar stuff. Yeah um, cool I I, rapid fire, rapid fire. Oh, um, there's just so many companies coming out with stuff for a sport where it's primarily you and your body and a pair of shoes that sometimes we, I wonder whether we need as much stuff as people are coming out with. But um, I think as is our philosophy, focus on your body, invest in yourself and your, you know, like keeping yourself healthy. Yeah. And then like, you don't necessarily have to buy sandals, but if you are in sandals, it's a cool concept. That's so, awesome. next few questions, we're gonna go super rapid fire okay, here. Cool. Adam Steves, trying to come back from a navicular stress fracture, any suggestions for shoes orthotics, or would you suggest gait analysis and more strength? I would 100% go gait analysis and more strength work. That's gonna inform you the type of shoes you need. I don't wanna like sweep the shoes orthotics under the rug, like that is important, but we need to start with our body first, figure out what we can and can't support, and then once we understand there, we can get ourselves in the appropriate shoe and we've got a good strategy. We, we didn't talk about the Brooks shoe, but we're gonna get your shoes in the mail and we'll talk about it in the We'll get it when we get it in the mail. Um, let's see here. Ah, oh, Running Guru says done, I'm number 100. Yeah. Oh, Troy says follow, Justin just subscribed, Yay. Jasmine just subscribed. Thanks guys. Edward says I'm 103, dude. <laughs> Some more subscribers than I've, I've had before. Watch the videos, let me know if you guys think it's useful, because I, I, even more, I'd love you to comment on them and, and give me feedback. Totally. Um, Eventually we'll be doing live shows over there and you can join. <laughs> two quick questions with answer, then we're gonna do our live drawing. Daz says, um, is two weeks between two half marathon races enough for someone who has run two to three halves? Um, it is, your job is to recovery, to recover like a professional. So it's not you sitting on the couch, you are hydrating, sleeping really well, you are immediately getting on that foam roller, you are taking care of all those sore spots after the first race. Um, you can be able to start to run maybe at the end of the week depending on how you feel um, And then you're just going to do some sharp workouts. That. You're, you're walking, walking before that. walking before that you do your workout Just go walk for a mile or two um, I, Nothing one heavy thing, between the two yeah, races. You don't have a training cycle in between. There's no time to like recover from that race down. Actually have a hard workout then recover from that workout and do your next race There's no you're not gonna get any more fit between your races other than maybe like a little, I don't, yeah, yeah. really, you're not gonna get more fit. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Brett Christian asks, do you have a video on choosing the right shoes and if I should rotate barefoot running, etc.? We have two videos on natural running form. Watch those, really helpful to talk about where shoes fit in. Um, and then if you just search shoes on our channel, we do have videos on how to choose the right running shoes yeah. and, and how to And we're gonna start coming up with more playlists. Um, we'd love, if you guys had anybody, you guys wanna come up with playlists um, and share them with us of our videos, we're, we're trying to like, we have so many videos now, we want to have to put them in places that you guys can find them uh, a little bit easier. We're doing four giveaways. What? Really? For the Luna Sandals. Oh, damn, a lot of you guys are getting damn. sandals. Holly hooked you guys up. Wow. Four giveaways, guys, and we're doing to do the drawing should, should we right do, now. Should we do two and then we do two? Or, yeah, let's do four. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go crazy. Okay. 
Before you guys get sandals. It's the holidays, right? It's the holidays. Here we go. Guys, make sure you Drawing. go support Luna Sandals, and, and if you don't win, uh, yeah, they're doing amazing things for us. So All that's really right. Awesome. So guys, we have your emails and we'll contact you, Ooh. but our, wither, our is, winners... Is that Geek Girl? I hope so. Heather Stringfellow. I hope you're running Geek Girl, because that would be so happy. That would be super awesome. Uh, you are a winner. Congratulations. Uh, Jean Haling and Heather, if you're not running Geek Girl, we're also happy for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and Searcy, Arkansas is where Heather Stringfellow is. Jean Haling from wait, wait, hold Trinidad on and Tobago. Okay. Are we cleared to give them stuff internationally? I'm not sure. Okay, hey, Jean, we like, this is a partner. We don't know if they're going to be we able to ship them check to you. Ship internationally. If they if they cannot, we will give you. We will three months of our, I guess our yeah, three months of our training club for free, yeah, um, and that'll be your prize. So that'll be your just, prize. Just so you know, I mean, we have an international audience, but not everybody else does. Totally. Yeah. Um, Alfred Patino from Texas. I was going to say Android Texas, but he was on an Android phone. Eh, That's not right. And then finally, Raul Vidal from Riverside, California. Oh, I you're staying safe for those fires down there, my friend. Uh, um, you're yeah, the winner. Totally. So Heather, Jean, Alfred, and Raul, you guys are the winners. Yeah. Uh, we will send you emails. Sales. All the rest of you guys. Go check out Luna Sandals, they're really cool, and and, and uh, support them because they are a sponsor of ours for this live show. Yeah. Oh, bummer, Des, I'm sorry, you missed the competition. Better luck next time. Remember, as soon as you log in, hit the Glean link, there will be more. Yeah. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, 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 got some. Dude, awesome. you got some sandals. You gotta be stoked. But well, anyway, it's 1 o'clock, it's 103. Guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we we really love doing these live shows. It's been like a fun part of our week. It's it used to be part. really really stressful, and it is stressful still beforehand because I'm scrambling trying to get the camera set up. But it's because you guys show up that we enjoy doing it, and we love interacting with you. So um, yeah, we are looking forward to a kick-ass part at the end of the year, and we're gonna we're gonna. Oh, right into I can't wait to share some of the things we got going for next year. Yeah, like it's, it's cool. gonna be super awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Cool. See you later. Yeah. This is the awkward part where we gotta close this thing down. I know. Stop the broadcast. Stop all. There you go.